Hello and welcome to the next edition of Business Accelerators. I'm Jackson Hewitt. We're here with the last episode of our discussion about BuildPro Bendigo, which was started by Susan Hull. Uh, they sell products, material products, to the building industry in the Bendigo area. Uh, who's been helping her? Well, that's Richard Shrapnel from Picture Partners. Um, Susan, let's just start with you. How did you start the business? Uh, my business background was with manufacturing, with a, a a um, building supplier so I come from the manufacturing side and then was approached by some other partners to set up the Bilpro Bendigo business to supply a whole range of products to the building industry in Bendigo. Okay and so what size are you at now in terms of uh, how many products you sell, how many staff you have? Uh, we have uh, five staff including myself, we have probably to about 25 preferred suppliers that have come on board with us so it's ranging from not just my background, which was bricks and pavers, but going into roof tiles, landscaping, and we keep expanding into that area for mostly outdoor products for the building side of things. So Richard, Susan really is the backbone of the business. It's her um, energies that have built it up to the point that she's at. Of course, one of the problems with that is that the owner manager is always the one who's forced to do the bulk of the work, um, but can't get up and above to get that bird's eye view of the business. What kind of things could Susan have done at the start to help put in place structure to help her um, grow the business but then also uh, look at uh, not being so hands-on in the way she manages it? Yes, look, it's, it's always difficult in small businesses. And I think Susan has done many of the things which she needs to do and it becomes the degree of extent. You continue to work and you continue to develop these. Small business, five employees, you begin to say, so what is the key for the growth of the business and how do I actually grow the business in a way in which I can release myself from the day-to-day -day duties? You need good employees, you need employees who are competent, you need employees who are interested in the business. And I think one of the things which Susan has built there is a culture. Uh, it's a place where people actually are friendly, they actually enjoy the work they're doing, and that becomes quite important because then you have staff who like working there, and therefore they'll take an interest in it, they'll take a pride in it, they'll begin to take responsibility for what they're doing. And I think that's really the starting point. Then you begin to identify those employees who maybe have got a bit more, um, I was going to say brain power, if that's the way you express it without being insulting, um, and they're the ones who can begin to step up and take greater responsibility. So it allows Susan then to step away and begin to focus on growing the business more. Because quite often what happens is you get lost in the day-to-day -day activities and as you're doing day-to-day -day activities you have no time to think about where to next. And of course it should always be about where to next. You talk about getting that staff right, but also it's a matter of getting the systems and the structure right. That's a bit more difficult though, isn't it? Yeah, and you have processes, and the processes start from the way in which stock comes in, where it's stored, how the sales get processed. It's that sort of accounting type system I think is fundamental. But I think there's another aspect to systems. It's about the relationships you form with the customers. It's a brand, it's the culture. Um, and I think there's, uh, and it's the way you interact in the marketplace, I think is also another important part of systems. And it's part of the growth. And of course, one of the key challenges for Susan, and for anyone who starts the business is, how do I release? At what stage can I begin to say, uh, this employee can do it as well as me, even though it's differently, and you begin to release. And I think that's part of the process in the system as well, the ability to progressively step up and to bring people with you. Um, the fundamental accounting processes, systems, they should not be a problem for anyone these days. So Susan, when Richard came to see you a, a while back, I'm sure he gave some of those recommendations. Uh, when you think about that process and those systems and, and helping those people along, how do you feel that you're at in terms of being able to pass that to your employees? Yeah, I, I think the, the key issue is to, to get the right staff balance and you do go through some um, various different types of staff to find that balance. Um, but it is making sure that you don't think that you've got all the knowledge and you pass that knowledge on. We, you know, we rely on our suppliers to pass that knowledge on and training relentlessly with these um, ever-changing products that we, we are passing on to our consumers. So uh, it is a process that we're always learning and I'm still always learning even though um, I've been in the game for a long time but you, um, it's, it's just you have to pass your knowledge on. And that's such an important part isn't it because if you want to build capital value in a business you need to be able to empower those staff yes. to grow the business outside of the influence of the owner. Yeah and I think a good way to think about capital value is about certainty. What certainty does there exist that the business will continue past one individual person? What certainty is there that the customers will still be there, the employees will still be there, the suppliers will still be there, the product knowledge will still be there, the brand will still be there? So the ability to release but to transfer that across to other staff and to have them 
acting in concert becomes quite important. So if you're not able to be there, the business still runs. And that frees you up, right? So if, yes. if you're freed up as an owner, you can think more strategically about what you could do next. That's, that's right. You can go and source new products. You can work more on the business side of it rather than the day-to-day -day running. And that only helps your business grow. Now, speaking of business growing, it's been an interesting time in the housing market. Low rates have pushed house prices up a lot, but that's not filtering through yet, we discover, to the housing sector. So how are things going in Bendigo? Um, definitely a bit flat. In our area, it was slow coming on. So we were a little bit fortunate there that we didn't feel it as uh, quickly as a lot of the other regional areas. There's still a lot of growth happening, but it is just con consumer confidence at the moment is right here, right now, quite flat. And what are your builders saying to you? Um, they're, they're still quoting, they're still getting the inquiry, but they're just finding it better, uh, well, harder to get the people to sign up and get them over the line to actually commit. And is it new house build that they're doing or are they just doing renovations and the like? Renovations have picked up a bit, but what they, of course, want to concentrate on is new house builds. And are they coming to you saying, cut your prices, please, we're having a bit of a hard time? <laughs> I don't think that's probably an issue at the moment because it's not really going to make people build houses at the moment. So Richard, what are some of the things you recommended that Susan could do at Bill Pro Bendigo to help grow in other areas perhaps? And Susan has a very good sense and I think as I said before, I think Susan clearly set out all the things she knew she had to focus on. The question becomes actually getting into them and doing them. And I think an important part of a business is there's the trade but there's also the retail. And for example, in this period of time, which it's quite, what Susan's identified is the need to push harder into that retail market. And as you go into the summer period, landscaping, fixing up the backyard becomes an important aspect. So I think when you grow, you've got to begin to grow from that base, that foundation which you've got. So if one part is quiet, where's the other part? And can I grow in that? And can I continue to begin to expand? So it really comes around who are the customers who are not buying from me? How do I tap on their door? How do I access them? How do I encourage them to come in? Are there other products which I can add into my range which, range, which is a natural extension for me? And I think you always grow very strong from that solid base rather than jump into something which is new. So the focus very much now is building trade is down. What can I do in the retail market? What can I do in the landscaping market? What additional products can I bring into that? And how should you reach out to those customers? Because you've got a big customer base of existing builders. Mm -hmm. Do they recommend you on or are you looking for a different customer base? Uh, the builders are happy to recommend on because they, they rely on us to be colour consultants to a certain degree. Uh, landscapers are happy to send their customers in and you know we do their, go through the products and and help them select that and the landscaper then just goes on to do the work. So um, it's ha having their confidence that they can send their customers in and know that they'll be looked after. Is that a competitive space in Bendigo in terms of um, landscape businesses? Oh, of course, and it's ever expanding. I mean, Melbourne's not that far away anymore, so um, it's, it's a closing market for us as well. Well, it's a fascinating time. I wish you the best of luck. Uh, Susan Hull from Bilpo Bendigo and Richard Shrapnel from Pitch Partners. Thank you very much.